Hello everyone, my name is Mary, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I transfer um, Hoyas that I newly acquire from their existing medium to pawn. As I have previously mentioned, I have the majority of my collection in semi-hydro in pawn and that works very well for Hoyas, uh, at least for me. So, um, I'm going to show you exactly the process I follow. Uh, just a little bit of my backstory before we go through that. Um, a few days ago, I came back from a trip to the Philippines. Originally, um, I came in touch with the local collector there and uh, I was planning to purchase from her the Hoya Imperialis, which is a dream Hoya for me. Uh, lovely leaves, big leaves, I love Hoya that have big leaves but the most important is the flowers that the Imperialis has so I got that one but you can never get just one Hoya apparently so I ended up with the Imperialis and six more uh, some I have transferred already to Pond but unfortunately I ran out of the medium so I had to wait for until I get new one and now I thought okay it may be a good idea to show how I'm transferring from the existing medium to pawn. Um, interestingly enough what the collector told me is that in the Philippines where she's located in Cebu in particular it is impossible to find pawn so she grows everything in uh, cocoa choir or cocoa husk or cocoa chunks. Um, the Hoyas that I got, I was expecting, you know, very small cuttings, maybe one or two nodes and one or two leaves. I got pretty well established plants with a very good root system in general. So I'm pretty confident that if not all of them, hopefully all of them, but if not all of them, the majority of them will survive the transfer to semi-hydro. Uh, so far from the Hoyas that I have transferred, I had success. I didn't have any issues. Um, so let's get started. First of all, I'm gonna show you briefly the new Hoyas I got. First one is the Imperialis. So as you can see here, I do not have it in semi-hydro. So this I already transferred, but in um, a chunky mix with some soil inside and as well as some crust egg cells. Imperialis is a terrestrial Hoya. So, um, I'm not sure how it will work on Pond or in semi-hydro. I tried to research a bit, I couldn't find much information, so I'm like, okay, maybe I can, you know, do a little experiment. So the whole plant that I got was not just this, but it was this along with this. So that was the actual length of the plant. And because it was impossible for me to carry, I decided to put the rooted plant in a medium that I believe that it will have no issues growing and then for the other half, let's say, to just try to grow in semi-hydro. So now I have it in just some pure water with some rooting hormone. Hopefully it will, it will root relatively soon. Um, Imperialis is supposed to be a Hoya that is very easy to root. So fingers crossed that everything will go well. And then with this part, I will transfer to pawn once the roots are a bit established. I'm not sure if this is a big cutting, so maybe I should have cut it here as well and make two different cuttings. I'm not sure, depending on how it grows and how the root system grows, I will see what I'm gonna do with this one. So this is the Imperialis. And I'll probably do a different video for this one just to show you, you know, the progress. Now, another Hoya that I got is this one. This is the Ingrasata. You see it has very nice leaves, quite big leaves in general, very shiny. Um, And I have already transferred to Pond in semi-hydro, this one. I will probably change the trellis to another one because I do prefer to put some string around my trellis, not just have it like 
with bear, uh, you know, this thing. Hoya Selata is the other one I got already, also transferred pawn. Um, this one, many people might know as uh, Publicalix uh, White Dragon, if I'm not mistaken. This is the previous name, but now it has uh, the name of Selata by itself. Um, it is very similar to Publicalix. Uh, the leaves are quite similar, but uh, the flowers are white, they're not pink or deep purple or pinkish as other genes of uh, Publicalix um, have. The next one is Hoyel Mary. So it has some leaves that are quite big and some newer leaves. I'm not sure if this will survive. They're very thin. So you see it's like most probably I expect these two leaves to fall off, but it's fine. Hopefully the rest of the plant will establish well and we will be able to grow in pond. And another one that I got is the Hoya Merili or Merilii. It also has a couple of leaves that are probably will fall off as you can see here. This is a bit yellow and also this is a bit weatherly, a bit stressed, but hopefully it is a big plant as you can see. So hopefully it will have no issues establishing in semi-hydro in pond. Now let's get to work. The two Hoyas that I still have remaining and I haven't transferred to Pond yet is a Bilobata and the Cutis Porcelana. So let's start with the Bilobata. Hoya Bilobata, the original Hoya Bilobata, how will you know that it is a Bilobata? Bilobata is um, quite similar to Burtonie, but the difference is that Bilobata's leaves, oh, and this is the tag, Bilobata's leaves are not fuzzy so they're very shiny very i'm not sure if you can see it here they are a bit wet because i had sprayed the the bag for the transport and it has some oh it has some new growth also but i'm not sure if this will survive to be honest but let's see so as you can see this is exactly how i got the plant so it has a relatively good root system and it has cocoa chunks. What I normally do is I try to remove the existing medium as much as I can. So I try, if it's in soil, for example, I try to remove 100% of the soil. I just leave the bare roots. If it's in um, sphagnum moss, I also try to remove all the moss, especially for the moss, it's important that you try you remove all of it before you transfer to pond because if you don't, the uh, moss has uh, the advantage or disadvantage in our case to retain much moisture. So um, there's a high chance that you will get the root rot if you keep any moss. So here in general, with this, I find it relatively easy to remove from the roots. The problem is that some roots may go inside the chunks, the cocoa chunks, so I will have to cut them. Um, many people, when they're transferring to pond or to semi-hydro, uh, they are completely cutting the plant, let's say from here, and they're starting from scratch. So they are rooting in water or in you know, their preferred medium. And then they move to semi-hydro. So they don't keep any of the old roots, of the existing roots. Um, I don't do that. I think that the roots, um, the roots that are to survive, they are surviving without any issues. And those who are to die, then they're, they will probably die. But I think that you know, there's no point in stressing more the plant. If it has a few roots, then we are just trying to maintain them. So as you can see here, there are a few roots. It is not bad. 
I can see a few hairy roots here, so these have uh, rotted already, which I will remove. But other than that, the plant is quite okay. So this is the bilobata. And then the second one is the cutis porcelana, this one. So this, as you can see, is a, is a big plant. So cutis porcelana, and I think this is the RJ1. Let me double confirm, yes. Cutis RJ1, according to the seller. I'm not sure what specific variety is this one, but in general, Cutis Porcelana is a very unique Hoya because it has very cute, maybe this is called Cutis Flowers. Uh, they are not hairy or fuzzy or anything like that. They do resemble to porcelain and probably this is how it was named after Cutis Porcelana. No, for the RJ1, I will really need to do some research on that because I'm not sure. So as you can see, I'm also removing here the majority. Uh, if some roots are stuck and cannot be moved, then I just, you know, like cut them. Like for example, here you can see some, there are a few roots, healthy roots, but I could not remove them. So I'm not, I'm not really worried about that. Usually what I have seen is that when I keep the roots, or at least some of the roots, uh, the plant is able to adjust much easier. The only difference is that I need, although I do use a wick system uh, for uh, the pond, so I have it in self-watering pots and I have a wick underneath, um, the only thing that I have noticed is that at the beginning for the first two or three months I need to water on top like a normal plant. I mean I always try to have enough uh, humidity and enough water in the container but I still prefer to water on top. So I think we are okay for the second one as well, you see. Quite a good root system in general. So I'm going to quickly wash these plants, put them under the sink, make sure that I remove any excess well, cocoa or whatever that is. And we'll be back with uh, potting into pond. And this is the outcome after the roots have been washed and trimmed a little bit because there were a few dead roots there but I tried not to overdo it in general if I see a healthy root system I try to let it be not overstress the plant it's already quite stressful for the plant the fact that it has traveled it came to a slightly different climate it came to a different place and now it's going from you know like the coco chunks to semi-hydro so what i'm doing is i'm just preparing my pots now this is a standard uh, three inch pot the root system is not big so i don't think i will need anything bigger for the time being so the three inch should be fine so i just put my wick inside I make sure that it can go in the bottom. I have the wick a little bit inside the pot as well because I want to make sure that at least at the beginning it absorbs the water it needs without any issues. I'm gonna put some on in the bottom. By the way, when you first get the bone, it is extremely dusty. So um, many people like to wash it in advance 
and then um, put whatever they want inside. I don't do that. If you can see here, you see all this dust that has been accumulated. Um, I take it as is. I don't wash it in advance. I think that this is extra work and I'm trying to avoid extra chores as much as possible. So I just put it in and before I put it here, I just wash the whole plant very thoroughly. So now let's start with the bilobara, which is slightly easier as it's a smaller one. And they just put the root system inside. I find a good height and then you just fill it up with the bone. So in general, I try not to put it higher compared to where it was, but I always try to have a few, like maybe the last two leaves half buried. I have found many times that it helps with rooting from that side as well. Just make sure that, you know, the leaves don't rot or anything. So I have removed the leaves slightly higher so I know that you know I have a few half buried leaves here and then that's the bilobata which to be honest I'm not gonna trace or anything I just I'm going to do a thorough rinse of the bone and then just let it be and see how it establishes in this medium now the second one is the cuties, cuties porcelana, which for sure will need the trellis as you can see here. The good thing is that I don't have any leaves quite low, uh, so I could bury quite a big part in the pond. Hopefully it will grow roots everywhere, so I will not have to worry about it too much. Let's see. So I'm still using a three inch pot. I don't think that we will need anything bigger. Uh, the roots are almost non-existent. They're not that big. Hoyas supposedly like to be root bound. I mean, I haven't personally seen that. But let's say that they do not like, to my experience, but they can tolerate being root bound. So I'm putting my wick in, make sure that it's low enough so it can absorb the water, perfect, I'm putting some pond in the bottom, and then we put in the plant. Normally, I would have put the trellis before I start putting in the pond, but I don't always do that. I prefer to see how the plant sits, like this one right now, and then try to insert the trellis. I'm going to be using this one. So this is a simple metallic trellis, which I have put some extra string around it and I do this only because this resembles a little bit the um, wood or whatever and Hoyas like to climb in general so this if you can see it has some hair so I believe that this will be easier for the plant to grasp onto so I'm gonna put it somewhere here down as much as I can I 
usually ponies, uh, if you don't do DIY pon and you buy the Lechuza pon, the ready-made one, uh, is quite small. So you can see they, they're like very small rocks. So uh, there's a high chance that you may have a few of the pond like going down uh, when you are potting. But what I always do is what I did right now. I just do this and then all the smaller chunks go on top and the bigger ones stay in the bottom and I don't have any issues in general. Let me put some more. All right. And we will need to trace this. Let me get some clips and I'll be right back. All right, I have some clips here. And let's try to trace. We're gonna start probably here. And then here. And then move back up. So, uh, what you may or may not know is that Hoyas are, well, they are epiphytic plants, so they like to naturally climb up. If you trace a Hoya and you um, put the end of the, of the stem uh, going downwards, facing downwards, there's a high chance that the tendril will die off. And this is something that you should always watch out for. So uh, there's a high chance that the stem will start dying and then you will have new growth from the last point where the stem still goes up. That's why when I trace my Hoyas, I try to not do this. Like now it's facing down, yes, but I will not tight here. I will just let it naturally go towards, you know, the sun, go up. So the last clip that I'm going to use is this one. And then all this, not sure if you can see, but all this, which is more than 30 centimeters, I will just leave hanging. So eventually it will start growing again up. And then once it reaches a good size, so I can make a full circle, then I will trellis like that. And I will continue going, and it will naturally continue going like that. So this is the best option if you don't want your um, Hoya to start dying from you know the very end. Uh, I have been doing this with um, most of the Hoyas that I'm trellising like that. Uh, my Caudata is growing like weed and it's exactly what I've been doing. Uh, the only Hoya that I haven't been doing this on purpose at least uh, is my Craspetiolata, but <laughs> this one for sure grows as weed. Um, I will need to retrellis soon. I will show you what I'm thinking to do. Probably I will make another video just for tracing the Crespetiolata. We'll see about that. So anyway, uh, all in all, this is how I transferred Pawn. Um, so far I had good success. I didn't have any plants die to me. Uh, just make sure to, before you transfer, to take out as much of the medium as possible. This is the most basic rule so you should not leave any soil any spunk no moss or anything and also um, remember that if you remove some roots even though they're healthy it's fine uh, but don't start from scratch there is no reason if you see that the plant is not going very well then yes of course you can restart the whole plant but as is, if the plant has a good root system, then there's no reason for you to, you know, put all this extra effort. 
so uh that's it for now i hope you found the reporting to pawn useful and if you did like what you saw please like and subscribe we will be having uh, more content especially for hoyas in the next couple of weeks because okay i have lots of chores to do with uh, my plants and now during the holiday season it's a good period to do this so thanks everyone i i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time